In this video, I'm going to talk about the question or the topic, do age gaps really matter when it comes to Australian partner visa applications? So stick around. So when considering the issue or the question, will an age gap matter? Will an age gap lead to a higher level of scrutiny in a partner visa application? It's important that we look at the two sides of this equation. On the first side or on the left-hand side, let's say, is what the law says. And on the other side or the right-hand side is what I would say is the reality or unofficially the impacts that an age gap can have in a partner visa application. So when we look at that visually, to confirm, the law does not specify that an age gap will lead to a partner visa refusal or that there is necessarily a problem in there being an age gap between the partner visa applicant or the Australian sponsor in a partner visa application. Love is ageless, right? Or at least in the eyes of the law, in the definitions of what it means to be in a de facto or spousal relationship, the law does not specify age gaps as being a problem. However, there is of course the reality. And the reality is that every partner visa application is being subjectively assessed by a human, by a department case officer that has the discretion to question and to scrutinize the genuineness of a relationship. And age gaps can play a role in the level of scrutiny that they apply in assessing the genuineness of any relationship. In our professional opinion, and in my humble opinion, the set of circumstances of facts that will lead to the highest level of scrutiny is generally where there is a younger male applicant from a high-risk country and an older female sponsor. And please understand that the the reasoning, the intention in the department's eyes in scrutinizing or looking at applications carefully that present that type of age gap is simply to protect Australian sponsors or vulnerable or potentially vulnerable Australian sponsors from being used for a visa purpose. Now that's not to say that in every application or in every case, where there is a younger male applicant from a high risk country and an older female sponsor, that the application is going to necessarily receive a high level of scrutiny. It is unfortunately impossible to know or predict how a department case officer is gonna look at that particular application because it really does depend on all of the relationship facts and the entire relationship history. But I would classify it as, or what we call it, as the elephant in the room. If there is an age gap in your relationship, whether that is being a younger male applicant to an older female sponsor or the other way around, or if obviously if it's a same sex relationship, if there's an age gap between the applicant and sponsor in either direction, then what I would suggest is that you address the elephant in the room in two ways. The first way is by talking about the age gap in your relationship statements. So both the partner visa applicant and the partner visa sponsor should be providing and writing their own relationship statements. For those that are interested, we do have a resource that will guide you and help you how to write your relationship statements. We have examples included in those resources. Now, as part of your relationship statement, if there is an age gap in your, in your relationship, we would encourage you and strongly recommend that you address the elephant head on. Talk about the fact that there is an age gap Talk about how that you, as a couple, have maturely worked through the age gap. Talk about how it, that it's not an issue in your relationship, that in fact is a positive fact. Then I would also encourage you to ask your friends and family, the ones that are closest to you, your, the ones that are the most inclined to know about the genuineness of your relationship, to discuss and mention the age gap in their supporting statements. So if you're providing supporting statements from friends and family in Australia, typically you would be providing form 888s. 
If you have friends and family overseas that are providing supporting statements, they can also complete Form 888s. That is a bit of a misconception that they can't. However, they can also use whatever the official statutory declaration form may be in their country. If that's the case, what I would recommend though, is that they mirror their supporting statement to match the Form 888. So the Form 888 asks specific questions of the person making that statement. How do you know the applicant? How do you know the sponsor? How long have you known the applicant? How long have you known the sponsor? Why do you feel the relationship is genuine and continuing? So if they're going to write their supporting statements using something that isn't a Form 888, that is fine, but just ensure that they address the same topics. But in their statement, tying this back into the topic of this video, it would be beneficial that they talk about the awareness of the fact that there is an age gap, that they are still supportive of the relationship despite the fact that there is an age gap and that the, in their eyes or in their view the age gap is not an issue and that it is 2021 and it is very modern and normal for there to be age gaps in the relationship so try to normalize if there is in fact an age gap in your relationship and so to recap so to answer the question again do age gaps really matter in Australian partner visa application I would say yes they can however if your relationship is one that there is an age gap, then it's simply about addressing it head on, address the elephant in the room as we say, talk about it in your relationship statements and ensure that your friends and family are acknowledging the relationship age gap as well. And that is ultimately the best way to approach a partner visa application when we're looking at facts where there's a bit of an age gap difference between applicants and sponsors. And I would encourage those that are in relationships primarily or specifically where the applicant is younger than the Australian sponsor. And particularly if the applicant comes from what we would say a high risk country, and that would be defined to mean someone that isn't entitled to apply for an ETA or an e-visitor visa or a working holiday visa. So if you hold a country passport that doesn't entitle you to apply for those, let's say online streamlined visas, then you will likely more or less be considered to hold a high risk country passport in some sense. And that could play a role as well in the level of scrutiny your application will receive if you also present relationship facts where there is an age gap. And that's it from me guys for this video. Signing off, Martin Salvo from Salvo Migration.